Are you taking the SAT soon and wondering how you can hack the hard section of the digital SAT? In this video, I'm going to show you some tips that can help you finish the test faster, help you get that 800 I know you want or something close to it. I have been coaching the SAT for almost two decades. I've scored perfectly on the math section of the SAT an embarrassing number of times on an embarrassing number of test forms. So I'm gonna share with you some of the tips that have helped me get perfect scores that have helped my students get perfect scores. If you want more practice for the digital SAT, I also have created an online video-based and online practice set-based course for the digital SAT. It includes three original practice tests right now. We're gonna be adding a fourth this month. And we hope to add more tests and more material in the future as well. We're introducing a tutor mode. So if you're a tutor or a teacher and you're looking to manage whether it's a classroom of students or individual students and you want to be able to track their progress in an online format, we are building that tool for you. So make sure you subscribe to our mailing list, supertutortv.com slash subscribe to find out more about that. And if you are a member of the National Test Prep Association, we are offering six months free on our tutor platform once it launches. So feel free to send us an email or contact us through supertutortv.com if that's you. Cool, let's do this. My first hack, Desmos sliders. If you do not know how to use a slider in Desmos, you are totally missing out. Here are the parameters that you need to use a Desmos slider. I want like an X, Y equation with a third additional variable, okay? When you have that, it's slider time, baby. So let's pull up Desmos and I'll show you how this works. So here's Desmos. I'm just gonna type in this equation here and look what happens when I type Y equals X, think of X plus A, boom, add slider. Isn't that fun? So just a little tip on how sliders work. If you ever need to change the range because you're not getting where you need to go, you can change the range. So if I didn't want negative 10 to positive 10, I can change this to 10 to 12. I can also change the step to like 0.5 and then it'll step up every 0.5. Oops. And you can see how that works. Now I'm gonna add the second equation, y equals four over x plus two. y equals four over x plus two. Okay, cool. So I can kind of see what's going on here. There's this line, it's kind of in between these lines. And then as I slide my A, I go, woo, oh, that's kind of cool. Look, that's what it does. Now let's look at the question. If the system has exactly two real solutions, which of the following is a possible value of A? So now let's try to figure that out. So I have two real solutions. That means I have to be intersecting at two points, right, to get a solution, or down here. So essentially I have to be below this point, which looks like negative six, or I have to be above this point, which is positive two. So greater than two or less than negative six is what I'm looking for. I go down to the selections here and there's only one because negative two won't work, two won't work, right? It has to be between negative six and, and two, doesn't work, anything else. 13 thirds is four and one third. That's gonna be good. I can even go up here and just double check it. Four-ish, yeah, four to five, we're all good. There's gonna be two intersection points there. Cool, Desmos sliders, check them out. Next hack, TA84 programs. So even though Desmos is amazing and I started doing a lot more stuff in Desmos than I used to do in the TA84, I will say there's a few TA84 programs that can come in pretty handy, the digital SAT. And one of my favorites, which though I don't use it on every test because there's not a long division problem on every test, if there is a polynomial long division problem, you can get a program to do this for you to basically do synthetic division for you. And it makes this a lot easier. So what this is, if you look at this and you look at these answer choices, you see how all of the, the, the answer choices have this stuff with like this fraction if you remember from Algebra 2 doing synthetic or long division, and you remember getting remainders, when you write out the answer of a division problem like this, right, you write the remainder on top and the thing you're dividing by on the bottom, and then this is the remainder, right? So all of these have that remainder pattern. So we know that this is like a synthetic or a long division problem. So if you don't wanna do that yourself, you can make your calculator do it for you. How? Well, there's a couple of programs that you can get online. I do not have any affiliation with these people. I'm just passing on the good news and the good words. And we can go and look at Ryan's blog here. Shout out to Ryan, good work. So here's Ryan's synthetic division program. You can look here how it works. You just type in the powers and then the coefficients and it spits out an answer like this. And what these are, it's just like synthetic division. These are the coefficients of what you have divided by. So if this was an X to the third term, this would be X squared, X, the constant, and then this is the remainder, right? So here, this has a remainder of zero. On this problem, if you use the same 
code, you would get a remainder of negative two, which would tell you that the answer is D. And just off the remainder alone, do you see how all these are remainders? Remainder, 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 remainder. You can find that. Another way that you can do this is the polynomial remainder theorem. If you know that, you can actually just plug three in right here and do three squared minus six minus five and get negative two. So that's another way that you can do this. This works here because all of the, right, the polynomial remainder theorem, which I'm not necessarily going in depth on, though I think I have another video on it somewhere. It works because all I need is the remainder but if I needed more than the remainder, right, if two of these had negative two as the remainder and then these were different, this polynomial division program would speed up the process a little bit and give it to me in the most lazy way possible. I just realized, oh yeah, I could do this with polynomial remainder theorem because all of the, all of these are distinct. And so all I need is the remainder and then I'll know the right answer. And you find the remainder, I don't know if you guys know that, polynomial remainder theorem. Another good thing to know, go look it up. And we'll post these in our blog, supertutortv.com slash hacks. Third hack, ratio shortcut. So if you don't know this shortcut, you should. And it, the basic idea is that if I have a single dimension of something, right, and, and that's in some ratio to another dimension of a similar something, we can go between ratios. So here, let's say that this side is x and this side is 2x. If I want the ratio of the volume of these two cubes, all I do is I take that ratio one to two, and I cube it, right? And that gives me one to eight is the volume ratio, right? I could also get the surface area ratio. How? I take the single dimension ratio and I square it. Why? Because surface area is an area and area is always square units, right? Squared. So it's gonna be a one to four ratio on surface area. So here we have a problem. If a pond has a surface area of 16 square fathoms, so that's 16 square fathoms. How many square feet is the surface area of the pond? So I need this in square feet. I need to convert. But I can't just convert by multiplying by 6, right? Because this is 1 fathom in a single dimension to 6 feet, not fathom squared to feet squared. So what I have to do is take this 1 fathom to 6 feet, and I'm going to square the whole thing to get square feet to square fathoms. So this is fathom squared over 36 feet squared. So it's actually 36. So now I'm going to flip this upside down because I want the 36 on the top, right? I'm just using dimensional analysis here. If you guys remember that, if that rings a bell, maybe from chemistry class, right? My fathom squared cancel, and I'm just going to multiply 16 times 36. I can do that in the calculator. It's just 576, and we're done. And that's how we solve that ratio shortcut. If you want more awesome hard problems like this to practice for your SAT, be sure to check out our digital SAT online self-paced course. We also have private tutoring. I tutor if you want to tutor with me and I do live classes. Right now we have an April live class coming up with me for the month of April that's in preparation for the May SAT. So if you're taking the May SAT and you want to do a live class with me, make sure you sign up at supertutortv.com. I'd love to see you there. We're also going to do a couple of super seminars. What are super seminars? They're two hour classes specifically for students aiming for top scores on the SAT. So if you're a kid who's like I was in high school, who's like, ah, I don't want to take a whole class. I probably know three fourths of everything they're going to teach. And I just need a little bump in score. This is totally the seminar for you. It's two hours of tips on the hardest questions. I would love it if you join me for those two supertutortv.com slash super seminar. Cool, cool. I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for joining me.